Welcome to the Celebs.com studio, Timothy Greenfield Sanders, Gina Machado, Beverly Johnson, Carol Alt. Pleasure to have you all in here. Timothy, tell me, like, obviously you've had big shows at Brooklyn Museum, National Portrait Gallery. What does it feel to have a film at Sundance? What is that Sundance thing for you? Sundance is a, a huge, uh, it's a huge thing. It, it's, it, for me, it's my third time here, but it's the first time this film will be seen by an audience. So sporadic people have seen it. My friends have seen it, but of course they're going to tell me they like it. And I'm going to see it tonight, or to this afternoon, with real people, and I'm very, very excited. To me, it must be amazing as well. I mean, you've got, you know, the muses of so many amazing other photographers, you know, whether it's Bruce Weber or Irving Penn or, or Richard Avedon. How does it feel for you to have shot the people that inspired them, and how do you fit within their, those legacies? You know, you could have done a film just about the relationship of these women to the photographers, because we, when I interviewed them, we talked about these, the photographers are such an important part of, of your lives, and of your careers, and that's that's maybe a, a second film or something. But you know, for me, I, I have my own distinctive style of portraiture, very different from most of the fashion work that these women have been shot by. But uh, you know, you get in front of a camera, you, you I get behind it, they get in front of it, it's magic. There's just it's nothing like a woman who the camera loves. And here are three examples. Yeah, Gina, I mean, obviously, been doing this a little while. Me? And, uh, I'm the dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, hardly, hardly. But certainly, having had these experiences, what do you, do you still look forward to getting in front of the camera? What does it feel like for you? I quit modeling in 1962. Are you kidding? <laughs> well, what does it feel like for you here? Because you're so playful still in front of the camera. It doesn't seem, it seems effortless. So is it innate? Is it innate with you? I or? guess, you know, you the, uh, you got to understand something. All the women of this film were extraordinary. They weren't just models. Just models of thousands of them. They all fell by the wayside. Only these women had something much more. They were smarter. They knew their business. They realized when it was time to move on or do something else that maybe would be better for their personality. And if you can do that, then you remain. I, I, in the film, there was a moment where you say that this wasn't something that you necessarily pursued as an individual, that it kind of came about, but it wasn't something you necessarily wanted for yourself. Wanted? I didn't even want it. Yeah. So well, how... I <laughs> you know. No, I, I began Runway because I became the... I was the model for Balenciaga and Givenchy. But I'd never been photographed until I went to America. But in Europe, I was the highest paid runway model before I came here. It was Oli Cassini who brought me here, and three days later, I met Richard Avedon. You know, but I was exclusive for him for three years. I couldn't be photographed by anybody else. What was so special about Avedon? Avedon, for me, was the most extraordinary photograph, he, photographer in the world for fashion. There's not a single fashion photograph that he ever took that somebody else didn't come back and copy. He was the top. I love it when you point at people because it's kind of like a famous finger. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but he was wonderful. If he put you in front of a camera, you thought you were the most beautiful person in the world. So is it strange to have succeeded at something that other people probably want more than you? I don't know whether it was strange, but at one point he told me after I'd been photographed for three years, he said, you want, I, want, I think you should go on. You're so specialized, you won't make money. Nobody's going to photograph you for catalogs, and you do editorial with me, but you can only do some special jewelry. Then he offered, you know, he and Nancy offered me uh, fashion director of Harper's Bazaar, which was three years after they wouldn't even publish my picture. That's how crazy it was, yeah. and I was there for 11 years. And Beverly, I mean, both of you have such a place in history with modeling. I mean, you were both firsts. Um, no, did, she was first. Yeah, so. you were both. Yeah, she, she was, was the trailblazer. She, exactly, yeah. and then and then you were a first. <laughs> Thank you. She uh, was the well. first as one of the most beautiful cover girls that ever came along. So, so that so was extraordinary. Does that? Do you still carry a sense of that importance? Oh, with, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, every day. I, I mean, it's made me who I am. Um, and and Francesco Scavulo was a photographer for that, and I have an Avedon story too, and I photograph him many <laughs> times. But anyways, um, but it was um, Tina who was the first woman of color, uh, you know, on Harper's Bazaar, and then I'm the first African American to grace the cover of Vogue magazine. So, you know, 
I, you know, like I, steps, I stood on know? her shoulders. Oh. <laughs> I stood Please. on her shoulders. <laughs> and made much better. There seems to be a sense of camaraderie between... Like, I'm the with, boring white yeah. girl in the room. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, but, you know, like, what is it, like, when Timothy said, I want to do this, like, what makes you want to talk about the industry and talk about your experiences? I think for me, and, and this is a very strange reason for wanting to do it, but I felt that the years between 1979 and 1987 were completely ignored by the fashion industry. Vogue doesn't even recognize those years as um, model as muse. They put a cover of Sports Illustrated of me, Christy Brinkley, Paulina, and Elle on the wall. And that was it for that era. I mean, that was a very important era. It was the era where they actually started using the word supermodel. It was the era where, I mean, I was the first supermodel ever to have a manager. I did posters and calendars and, and started to step into other things. And, you know, my father said to me, when I first started modeling, you have five years and you're done. At 25, I was already doing posters, calendars, videos, movies. I mean, it had parlayed to other things. And I think that it was, it was a moment when models went from just being models to m moving People, on to becoming names. celebrities you know, names. and personalities yeah. and, and being able to utilize it in other ways. I mean, it really was striking when I watched the, the documentary. I mean, and HBO and Timothy did such an amazing, mm -hmm. amazing job in creating something that takes fashion through history and history through fashion. Absolutely. And, you know, there was a moment when I think it was, um, I'm not sure if it was you. I, I mentioned or if it, it was yesterday. I mentioned it yesterday that fashion was just about selling clothes. That's how it first started. No, but I'm even talking before that when they said they used the, the moniker of model to cover over the fact they were hookers or prostitutes. Mm, right. So that's where we're coming from. Mm to we to today and the moment of the 1980s when there were the modeling wars you know this Beverly because we worked together a lot they had the modeling wars they had new agencies opening up prices were going up mm -hmm. time magazine did a story about it well you know carol alt if you have to ask you can't afford her yeah. i mean that's how crazy it was getting and and that was the moment so for these I mean, magazines to forget the girls of those era i mean how do you do a retrospective of vogue 75 years without isabella rossellini or Kim Alexis. Right. Yeah, I think what's special is that if you look at the history of modeling, it only goes back a, a few years. Yeah. Really. Carmen, who's still alive, who's still in the film, Chinez actually done a Barney's ad recently. They're, they're modeling, but you know, in those days, modeling was very looked down on, and I mean Hooker looked down on. Yeah. And today, everyone wants their daughter to be a model. Every woman <laughs> aspires to it. Everyone. They stop that's, you that's, on the street. Does my child yeah. have it? So mm. it's changed so radically in only 60 years. That is, that's an ideal subject for a documentary because we still have these people with us. But see, nobody else saw that, Timothy. That's what's so brilliant yeah, well, about this film. I'm it genius, really makes you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> genius and right timing. Thank you. And no, HBO but, well, has very just important. Really Sex came into fashion. Right. That sure. for me was a very important thing. Suddenly, you did in Sports Illustrated, and here they put the best looking model. I mean, that. Issue zoomed and it became the most favorite issue and of copied. all the year and most copied. absolutely and also you know, it became it became that the audience became for men yeah exactly and before yeah. the audience was only for women yeah and then Sports Illustrated very brilliantly did these swimsuit covers and all yeah. of a sudden men were buying the, that issue they already were so buying the issue but now it doubled yeah, right exactly. yeah amazing yeah. Julie Campbell right. Right. Exactly. and they put your name on the cover which right. was unheard of at unheard the time of. now it's on every cover yeah. and they don't even use models anymore they use celebrities and yeah. I find that kind of boring because models are really beautiful to look at so Timothy for you was it as much or more about telling the story of modeling or was it telling the story of these specific personalities you know I started out going to a party and saw a bunch of these women there and thought it's an interesting idea maybe that's a film a photo I'm not sure two years later it's a film and as I got to know them better I got to understand how complex it was that this is really a story about race and 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 drugs and AIDS and all the issues that were part of the 60s 70s 80s even the 50s and and plastic surgery all politics. these all, politics all these things really a history of of our, of our, our lives, lives. Yeah. but fashion showed photographically what was happening you know you were influenced by them 
Right. I mean, you influence the influence of rock stars coming into fashion, mm. getting girlfriends who were models. I mean, all this sort of intertwined right. that became something Entertainment. Different. It became part yeah. of entertainment. And all the pop stars suddenly began looking really like Tom Ford wearing all these. I mean, you <laughs> were, did you see the show? What was it? The yeah, last one? Right, right. Everybody looked gorgeous. I mean, these guys came on. They were swarm the black suit. And <laughs> I said, wow. You know, <laughs> you know, you got to be a model practically to be a movie star today, yeah, you so know? And, and how could you not or an do athlete, a even. film about this world through the eyes of these kind of women? It's, it's, it's a no-brainer to me. Yeah. And as I got deeper into it, I realized, oh, this is just gold. Was there anything you had to leave out that, for the sake of time? Everything. Out. A lot. Was there anything yeah. in particular that you <laughs> wish, wish, wish you could have fit in? Uh, there, there was a lot. Uh, there, there, because there were so many great lines that, that if you're, you're talking to them, you do an hour interview, you cut that down, you end up with four or five, six minutes of somebody. But they said so many great things. And I mean, there are lines that, Chena had a line that I wish would have been in the film. She, I said, Chena, you know, beauty kind of opens doors for you, wouldn't you say? And she says, it opens doors, but you better be ready to dance right through. And it's, you know, beautiful metaphor. And I didn't use it ultimately, because it, it didn't fit, but I'm well, using it now. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Carol, like, also, is it like when you watched the film, you've seen the film yes, in its absolutely. entirety, um, like were you alone watching it or did you no, watch it? No, I was actually watching it in the lobby of the hotel here, <laughs> which uh, the producer Chad Thompson actually put it up on his computer, so I got to see half of it. Didn't see the end of it. I didn't even get to see the end of it where my part comes in. But I, so I'm speaking strictly as someone who is viewing a film that looks like I have no part in. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about viewing Beverly and China and uh, I saw Carmen and Lisa Taylor. Paulina. So, yeah, Paulina, Isabella. I, I saw a lot of the film, but you know, what I realized in, in doing this and why I was so flattered and proud to be part of this was that this, this is history. This is a major piece of history and as always with history you build your future on the past and that's what that's what this is this is a ladder to the future and it's it's I think it's a very important film for me it, it was uh, the film to me um, was very interesting I don't like any films okay I, I like Iron Lady but basically I don't like anything and what what made it very interesting to me because it it it, it it was very human. And you really got to see these women, because we're, we're basically a printed page, and then when we do interviews, they're sound bites. So you really got to know who this person was. And for me, that was the interest. So do you feel like this is one of the first times you actually got to voice your voice? Well, I voice my voice a lot. Yeah. But for me, looking at the film and looking at Carol and China and all the other women, Lisa Taylor particularly, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you really, and I know them, so I know their story. Yeah. But I think, for me, it's very wonderful that the world gets to see that we are really just human beings, and we're flawed, and we have fears, and... We're awkward, and... And we have all those things yeah. that everyone else has. And, and there's also a very poignant moment in which she says, she says, I, I was looking at all these models on the runway from far away and not being part of it. And then, thank God, she became a huge part of it. Right. But that kind of, no, 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 her look in her face when she said, when she saw the runways and how they wanted to be there and, and would, I mean, it was really touching. It, it would be very easy to yeah. make a film that's superficial. Yeah. And I think this film transcends that because there's depth in these women. What, what I particularly like is the respect between the women mm -hmm. and their acknowledgments of each other. Like obviously you mentioned Lisa Taylor, but yes. the way she obviously looks up to you as well. Yes. And um, I just want to thank you guys for stopping by. I wish you all the best today. Thank Enjoy you. seeing it with a big audience and uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Well, we're soon. all proud to be here. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks so Thanks, much. Thanks, Timothy.